everyone. Welcome back to the Theater Podcast, intimate personal conversations with the industry's biggest names. I'm your host, Alan Seals, and our guests, guests, plural, that's hard to say, <laughs> our guests today for this episode are Andrew Barth Feldman and Alex Boniello, who are here discussing a brand new online whodunit murder mystery project that they've put together that just launched called Foul Play, which is... Very interesting. I didn't realize this. It it was filmed entirely back in 2021, which, as you recall, is in the middle of the pandemic. Broadway was pretty much shut down still, and uh, they recorded it and didn't realize how they were going to get it out. So they needed to invent a new technology to actually get their content out, which just launched. And it's absolutely incredible. It's like... Uh, what you can you can click between multiple camera angles all at the same time. It's kind of it's sort of like you're the, the you're the producer director for a Big Brother type of production where you can just click around between different rooms and try to figure out who done it in the moment. Like you're just you know at Alex's house uh, and Andrew's house having a uh, you know a little murder mystery. So they are two tech nerds that have a love for playing games and just sharing the fun with the world. And as a fellow tech nerd. I highly respect that. This is great. So, as always, find me online, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, Facebook, and make sure you watch Foul Play because it's just this incredible new thing that they've created. So now everybody, please enjoy this episode with Andrew Barth Feldman and Alex Boniello. Here you go. One, two, three. Today's two guests are no strangers to your earballs, having co-created and hosted many episodes of Broadway Jackbox and Broadway Who Done It. Andrew Barth Feldman won the 2018 Jimmy Award for being totally cool, which led him to kick out whoever was starring in Dear Evan Hansen at the time and take on the title role while still a high school junior. Thinking he screwed up his actual high school experience, he took a role in High School Musical, the musical, the series, to try to make up for it. But being a true Gen Zer, he then starred in Ratatouille, the TikTok musical, A Tourist Guide to Love on Netflix. And the, uh, <laughs> and the upcoming comedy film No Hard Feelings alongside Jennifer a. Lawrence. And not to be outdone by his bestie, Alex Boniello has literally done anything you need and everything, including acting, writing, and winning, a, winning Tony Awards for co-producing Hades Town. He too is in Dear Evan Hansen as Connor Murphy and will be seen in the upcoming follow-up to Disney's The Descendants franchise and the CBS hit show Ghosts. He's, uh, since... A total workaholic also authored a children's book, A Case of the Zaps, and claims on their credits, including the Tony nominated Broadway revival of Spring Awakening, Lynn Manuel's 21 Chump Street, Cruel Intentions, the musical I Am Harvey Milk, and of course, the national tour of Green Day's American Idiot. Together, they have now found 30 spare minutes each and every day when avoiding a good night's sleep and have launched a new online murder mystery series called Foul Play. Holy crap, guys! I'm tired just from reading those bios. Welcome yeah, to the that was podcast. great. You did a really good job. I you find, got it I all in there. When you're a person who does lots of uh, lots of things in lots of different forms, people generally pick the one that they understand the most to lead with. I have found. Um, no, but you and, told but the whole story. It. it was narrative. <laughs> it was great. And we are now five and a half thousand minutes into the episode. That's all the time we've got. <laughs> You two are both incredible people and, and uh, relatively young, depending on what perspective you're looking from. And you've done <laughs> from, my, from mine. I whenever I like have a conversation with Andrew, I'm like, No, nah, man, I'm very, I'm very old to nine year olds. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> I remember Andrew when when we met, right? It, when we first met, you were 16, right? You were doing or 16 or 17. Yeah, and, you know, yeah, that, that was like last year. And so but you've done so much since then. And and Alex, too, like the the two of you, um, I mean, I, I want to talk about foul play, which is this new online murder mystery series you've got and you've reinvented how the Internet works. And we're totally going to get into that. But uh, I guess the two of you together, where did this friendship come from? Where did you meet and then we'll get into the why behind the murder mystery stuff because you won't let it go and I love it. No, nope, not at all. What a great question. Do you think is, whose perspective do you think is objectively funnier? <laughs> Definitely I think yours. it's yours. I, I think it's yours, yeah. Alex. Okay, great. Yeah, so I mean, like, I was in Dear Evan Hansen for just under a year uh, already before Andrew had joined the show. And I remember um, 
I remember kind of knowing that this was going to happen for a minute because like everybody, I watched the Jimmy Awards that year. Um, and I just started hearing, uh, you know, to quote uh, the Broadway musical Parade, uh, I heard some rumbling and a rolling that uh, the kid who won the Jimmy would be joining the show. And I, I remember, and I've said this to Andrew, I was like, oh no like are, are we sure like and of course like you know like leaning into the joke of that aside of course that's a big a really big ask um because you know it's evan hansen is one of the harder roles ever kind of made for anyone ever and then you know we're just gonna yank this kid who has never done a show for more than two weekends and make him do it so <laughs> yep. obviously i was like I was like, oh my God, what are we sure? And I remember, this is taking a long time, but it's worth it. I remember uh, seeing Be More Chill off Broadway to uh, to see uh, our friend Will Rowland. Um, and I remember Andrew was at the show that night. Uh, yeah. And you knew you were doing Dear Evan Hansen. I and knew you knew you I was doing Dear yeah. Evan Hansen, you but didn't we didn't know, know that each I other know. knew. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yeah. yes. So I like saw him from afar. And I remember turning to my then girlfriend, now wife, April, and being like, that's the kid. He's That's the guy. And I remember being, she's like, oh my God, you're going to look so old. He's so little. <laughs> like, you know, but so so that's that's like the, the very truthful. Precursor, but really. Yeah. And then, you know, he starts showing up at work which is also really in retrospect funny he because you know andrew's young now but he was like a uh or young looking 16 too He's like a little boy walking around you know the halls of this of this play and he'd like be like hello and i'm like hey you know, like, <laughs> and, and there like, was this you know, thing of like you you I and i have always been uh uh i would say an unlikely pairing i i don't i don't know exactly what it is that kind of like drew us to one another but it was it was definitely time more than anything else but i think yeah i just i just started coming to alex's room and being like did you hear the news about star wars land and stuff like that and like <laughs> we would like talk about that stuff and uh over that time especially i think us leaving together we left the show at the same time we we'd, we built a relationship over the year to be sure we were really close um this kind of like sibling relationship that we had but leaving together really cemented something i think and then uh over the pandemic it was broadway jackbox i i when we started doing that i just did it once and i invited my friends and alex alex uh, being one of them came and uh the next morning i woke up to like a hundred texts from alex that were like we're gonna do this twice a week now and we're gonna raise money for the actors fund and and we're just gonna do that until broadway comes back in let's say three weeks and then of course it was uh, <laughs> it was multiple years but we yeah. did it we did it twice a week for six months and we ended up raising over a hundred thousand dollars for the actors fund wow um, and and so all those things leading to each other we just knew we were a good team to then tackle this uh Murder yeah. mystery idea, which got, has got its own origin story that I'm sure we'll get into. Yeah. But yeah, that's kind of that's kind of how this odd couple came to be. Yeah, and I think it's I think it's also too like like any like it's very funny to refer to what we do as a legitimate working relationship because it everything we do feels so silly. But you know, like we're, we're like finding ourselves on marketing calls. No less than a month ago, we were literally on a marketing call in epcot like in a in a corner like that's kind of what's going on <laughs> but um yeah that's no, true I find, that's I, true i have i have found that i think that it functions probably the friendship but more so the working relationship because uh i think whenever you frequently collaborate with a person there is a what are this person's strengths and what are the other person's strengths and i think that Andrew's little anecdote there about the um, Broadway Jackbox thing is actually exactly why we work really well together because Andrew is kind of a never ending fountain of like idea and kind of like, this is the idea. This is what I think it is. And I think that I'm pretty good at the wrangling of it, um, which is exactly what we said. It's like he had the idea and I said, OK, we're leaving something on the table here. This is what I see this being. Let's do that. Um, and I'm realizing in real time that that's also I think my strength is like a when I write songs too. I actually think I'm better at the uh, less good at the writing of the song and better at the sculpting of the sound of the song. Which is funny because you when you send me songs, you actually are looking for me to do that. That's funny. Never I'm noticing that in real time right now. On well, the look at podcast. us being we're collaborating on everything all the time, and uh, that's why we're here today talking about foul play. Yeah. All right. Well, then foul play is okay from my perspective, and I've gone through episode one. It is. I didn't know that. That's 
great to know. Yes. Okay. Yes. I have. I have. I have been sent. By the time this comes out, it, uh, you guys will be live. But I, I have an advanced screener, so I've been. Okay. Great. So we one. can talk spoilers and stuff then. Oh, totally. Totally. Oh, great. Yeah, let, great. Let's totally spoil everything. So I know who done it, and. and the format, though, is so incredibly cool because uh, you log into the portal and it actually has a little desktop app, too, that I installed. So I opened up a little desktop app. Alex is like, what? <laughs> cool. yeah, that's kind of news to us, but we're going to act like we knew it. Oh, cool. All right. Yeah. The little browser is like, do you want to open this in its own window? And I'm like, yes, I do. So nice. I open it in my little thing. And it's basically a, a multicam feed uh, of, let's see, it. Uh, video village for those who who know the yeah the, the uh, that's gr- the i'm gonna use that i'm gonna use that in the right rooms going forward i haven't thought to use that thank you yes so uh for, for those who don't know video village is like where the, the director usually the creative team will sit there and watch all the feeds coming from multiple cams when you're shooting a multi-cam uh, movie or tv show so we as the audience are looking at this multi-cam feed of it's three different rooms of all of your actor four different rooms yes four different rooms of all of your actors uh, improvising, and I want to I want to get into how much of this is improv versus how much of it is like you know outline uh, this entire murder mystery simultaneously from all these different rooms, and we can click through to different rooms at any time to start eavesdropping on the different conversations, hoping we we pick up on the clues of who done it. ha ha ha. So. Did I get it right? Didn't leave anything out? That was great. No, I mean, that's pretty much, that. that's the summary. I was happy to hear you explain it instead of us, you know, having to explain it for the billionth time. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so I'm excited about, uh, okay, the origin story, like you said, well, you teased that earlier, but where did this idea come from to do yet another whodunit? And then where... Where where was the moment? How was the moment? How did that spawn when you were like, let's just do something weird that nobody's done technologically? Yeah, that was never, that never happened. Like that, like never was our goal, let's do something crazy technologically. It was really the most natural and organic genesis of something ever. The the history of Broadway Who Done It doesn't really need to be said, but I was I've been doing murder mystery parties at my house since I was really little. Alex came to one of them when we did them at Dear Evan Hansen. They became so elaborate that I had like fog machines and like cardboard structures that I had <laughs> was building and like strobe lights. And so like that had its own genesis. And then over the pandemic, we wanted to do it on Zoom. That's how Broadway Who Done It got born. And that was kind of a breaking of a lot of different softwares that we were just doing on our own. We broke Zoom, Vimeo, Squarespace, and this thing called Century Login to make Broadway Who Done It happen and that wasn't let's make some crazy technology that was how do we give you the digital experience of a murder mystery party and i think what's funny too really quickly is we're probably going to use this exact anecdote in most interviews we do about i know we already have but there's something kind of funny about that because when andrew told me about all of this my brain immediately went to where we are right now with foul play and i said to andrew i was like we can't can't happen like what i what i am envisioning for this to be the coolest possible version of this we can't do it it's not doable and it's kind of amazing to be sitting here having done it and also yeah we made the dinky version to manifest the the giant version and this (laughs) that's exactly right (laughs) um and and here we are so so then uh we we went to hunter arnold um, and TBD theatricals, and we said, hey, we have this thing, like, I don't know if this is interesting, but these are kind of, like, the number of people watching it, and, and how it we've been doing it, and how it functions, and all this stuff, and uh, he was like, it's here. We were kind of like, what's the next step? What's, uh, you know, can we do a live production? Can we do something like that? And he's like, no, let's just do this, but I'll give you money to, like, actually do it, and really, really do it. So we worked with him and his amazing team at uh, TBD Productions, namely uh, Tyler Newhouse and Tina Cocomelli, to uh, film this on a set over the course of five days and just make the interface that was what we had already had in our heads at Broadway Who Done It, a live stream murder mystery. So it was never like, let's pioneer a new entertainment technology, ho, ho, ho. It was instead let's expand this murder mystery idea, make it like you're doing surveillance cameras, and accidentally along the way we've stumbled ourselves into developing an entirely new technology uh, for uh, entertainment. I I remember having conversations with uh, Hunter early on where he was like, you know, this exists, 
I think I know how, like, what I can license to make this fun. Do you remember these early conversations, Andrew? Yeah, of course. They were, yeah. And it, it was, you know, again, like, I wonder if we would have gotten it made if we knew then that we would eventually have to invent the tech. Um, That's right. I, I genuinely, I don't know the answer, but yeah, to, to sort of like hammer home Andrew's point, it was story and and entertainment came first. And then there was a day where we were like, oh my God, I think we might have to like invent this. Like, And, and this was, was after we filmed it. It was after like, right. we filmed really? these five cases, not knowing how we were going to present it to you. We had the idea, we had the vision. We didn't have the team that was going to build it. Luckily, lo and behold, I would say a year and a half later, we found Sigma Software, this incredible team in Ukraine that has been working with us. We've been on weekly calls with them. Yeah, Ukraine, like fucking Ukraine. Um, we've been on <laughs> weekly calls with them. Uh, and they're the best and having the greatest time and they're, they're just unbelievable uh, at what they do. And so, yeah, we, we didn't know that it was ever going to get made, let alone what it was no, going to look and, like. And it's exactly what we dreamed. And in the meantime, you know, in that big chunk of time between filming, so we filmed in August of 2021. Um, in between that period of time, we just kind of kept plugging away. We had editors editing clips that like we just kept doing work but this sort of nebulous what is this work for what is it leading toward how are we going to apply what we are doing because you know we've committed there are investors in the, much like in a broadway show like money had to be raised right yeah, like yeah. so like how do we make good um and it, it did take a while to find the solution but much like this project has been a kind of magical thing of if we don't find this group of people or this person this project is dead in the water tomorrow that happened like three times and every time we found the person like and so sigma is the people not only in their skill set but andrew would absolutely back this up in their kindness and their senses of humor and their and their like like we are not the typical people who these companies will be sitting on a zoom call with right like you know we're sitting there like laughing and making jokes the whole time while having very serious conversations about like user interface and they got it and they get it and we genuinely like delight in <laughs> meeting with these people every week and honestly one of the things i'm proudest of if i can pat andrew and myself on the back it's that on more than one occasion we've received emails or texts like from the people we work with who will be like this is my favorite meeting of the week and like that idea is sort of always what this whole thing was founded on, right? Like, if we are not having fun, if we haven't, because we, we also hired people, like, we were hiring people, which is so, like, funny in retrospect. Less funny now, because now I think we're both more comfortable with that idea, but, like, you know, that was part of it, finding the people who would understand the vibe of this project, understand that it's always meant to be silly, it's always meant to be inclusive, like, the jokes will never punch down, at a group of people like we really wanted to build this big communal thing and i i i don't know i'm speaking for myself but i think andrew agrees we're just really proud of the group of people we we put together because we were every running, level on fumes thing, yeah. and, running on fumes and vibes you know what i mean all we can do is like a vibe <laughs> check because these people were qualified already but we just had to hope and the 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 vibe check the people that you've hired at least in in the case that i watched um all work so well together. Are are they people that you knew would already be able to improvise? A and I guess people you've worked with uh, in one form or another because it's it's an incredible cast of people. Yeah, for the most part. So so a lot of the folks you'll see throughout the the season of Except cases. Except Will Rowland, we know he's he just can't improvise. No, he's all, no. he no. he's absolutely the weak link of the series, and that's yeah, just absolutely. something we have to live with. Yeah. Um, but uh, <laughs> no, we we a lot of people you'll recognize from work we've done before. Uh, uh, you know especially Dear Evan Hansen. There's a lot of those folks in there. Um, but a lot of them, too, are uh, seasoned improvisers who Alex's wife, April, who was our improv star, has worked with before or pointed us to, uh, like Lou Gonzalez, Erica Hernandez. In that first case, they're just brilliant. Um, and folks who were just friends of ours, like Sis and Ryan Haddad, who we knew were so, so, so funny. And what's so great about Foul Play is 
we're not counting on any one person to be a star. Everybody can be exactly who they are and who they want to be on the day. And you as the viewer can follow whoever you want and whoever's appealing to you. And that's going to be completely different depending on uh, who you are. So like one person might not be as strong at improvising and they might be like trying to solve the case in earnest. And that's great too. You can do anything. Yeah. I, and we were, we were, I think we're also really proud too of like, it was really no accident who we paired with who where we employed actors because for those of you listening we kind of have it's like a the fun way to think about it is like we had actors in rep so we had a big group of actors that we would then build each episode we'd be like okay these seven people will be in this one whatever and yeah what, what andrew's saying is you know we had like legitimately professional comedian improvisers littered throughout our group of friends who might have been like Hey, I've literally never improvised before. Am I going to be okay? And again, like on the day, what that came down to was again, my wife, April, who's in one of the episodes, would lead everybody through like a warm up of this is the improv language for the show. If you ever need help, just step out of a room. Like in, on more than one episode, April was running around fully with a headset on, just being like, just, just ground yourself. Don't even worry about it. Just like remember what you're here to put. Like, and other wow. people were like, other people are like, I got it. Don't even worry about me. And that combination that also like led to. Rolling. Yes, that was. Yes. But, but that <laughs> oh, also yeah. led to like. <laughs> oh, yeah, totally. <laughs> It led to amazing moments because it had, there was a lot of trust on display too. And I found, Andrew, you can probably corroborate this. Some of the people who were the most nervous about improvising did some of the funniest stuff that happened ever because it was Garrett such Clayton. A, Garrett dude, Clayton. Garrett Clayton. <laughs> Garrett Clayton got off of a red eye for us, went straight from the plane to this studio in Greenpoint where we were filming. He was like, I literally don't even understand what I'm here to do. And like watching <laughs> watching like Andrew and our producers hand him like a Trenta iced coffee and say, Okay, you're playing a fictionalized version of yourself. All you really need to know is we were hoping you were Henry Winkler and you're not. And then he just went, Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I know I was watching him a lot of the time and he he just kind of like he plays this really intelligent doofus version of himself and it's brilliant. It's unbelievable. He, he delivered. You you that that role we knew it was going to be like, you know, a celebrity and we had to cast someone who was comfortable with laughing at themselves and we didn't know Garrett Hunter actually knew Garrett our our producer and so um for him to show up and be as crucial to the episode as he was <laughs> oh, was man. a surprise to all of us I think him included. Yeah, and like, again, like, you know, in, sorry if you hear the police coming, it, foul play is just simply too funny. They've got to lock me up. Um, no, but, but, uh, <laughs> Garrett was a, a, another thing that really killed me about him and why I was so happy he was there is that was, again, we didn't know him. It was just trusting people to say that this person's gonna, you know, d do it. And again, like that energy he showed up with was accidentally the exact energy we needed that person in that role to show up with. He just came, was ready to play. I mean, here's the spoiler. If you don't want to hear this, skip 15 seconds. Spoiler, spoiler, here it comes. The dude started taping pictures of Henry Winkler to himself. We didn't <laughs> tell him to do this. <laughs> I was gonna ask he, him he, about that. No, he proposed out of nowhere this idea that he says, oh, I am here to become henry winkler and everybody in the room i don't even remember this happening when i was watching back i was like i was in the room for that no this me me alan me seeing it in real time the first time you see me as again spoiler bibble d bop discovering that this is what garrett is doing is the first time i andrew barth feldman in real life knew that this was happening that's like right. it's that's like right. wild <laughs> you know we as the creators of this thing and more to the point andrew who wrote all of them along with an amazing writing team uh he would not let me know anything that was going to happen because andrew quote wanted my experience to be pure um <laughs> i i you know to see there are moments where you see andrew and i specifically get delighted in real time by what these people decided to spend their time doing because again as actors we don't see each other sometimes we might not you know, I might not check in with like Celia, for example, for like 45 minutes because it just doesn't happen that way. Yeah. So then I show up and all of a sudden she's like exploded this character out into some wild thing. And we just uh, my favorite thing will be when Andrew asks an actor. So 
Can you just, for clarity, please repeat to me what you just said, both so that Andrew can understand where these people have taken his characters, and two, so that we're all on the same page that this person is now supernatural or something. <laughs> and uh, the, When you first came out, Andrew, did you know you were going to be Bibble D Bop? Um, I did. I did. Because that, I, I don't think anybody else knew other than your writer, your writing team. Because I went back specifically when you introduced yourself to watch everybody's individual reaction because nobody could hold it together. That's right. Yeah, I, I nobody knew I was going to be Bibble D Bop or even that I was going to be the investigator, uh, that right. I was going to come back in the second half as a new character. Only the person who's going to die knows that they're the person who's going to die and me um, and that they're going to come back as the investigator. That happens every, every uh, case. So um, me as... Uh, Bibbledy Bop. Yeah, I, everybody who was the investigator, that's the one role where everybody got to choose their own name. And uh, I <laughs> named all the characters anyway, of course, with with, with help. But uh, that was one where I was like, what's my name? What's my name? What's the name? And the first thing I said was Bibbledy Bop. And uh, that was it. It was never going to go anywhere. And I needed, I knew I needed to look directly at Alex and tell him not to laugh and that it would make him laugh. And I, that was my bit for the entire second half. And I think it's one of my favorite characters I play in the whole season, actually. Well, it's unbelievable, too, because again, like, I'm not to get like too actory and dorky about it, but you know, comedy is only funny when it's based in overwhelming truth, right? Like, if you are trying to make something funny, it doesn't really happen unless you're coming from a place of truth. So, like, in in retrospect, there's something so funny to Andrew going, my name is Bibble Bop. Don't laugh, because this character's whole life, people have been laughing at right. him when he says... Yeah, like, it's you immediately fill it with that. And that's why we're so happy and proud of the actors that we hired is everybody figured out how to operate on that level really, really quickly. And and it was just it's a testament to everybody that we had and also a testament to like the crew. And again, the people we hired that like the environment felt safe enough to just like do stuff. And it was it's almost all funny. I I enjoy it so much and and the ability to again to, like to switch between the different rooms and to see what's going on and speaking of the overall I guess the outline right so when you're writing it Andrew and are you are you are you talking to everybody individually or um, does everybody come together for that that group improv rehearsal because you do rehearse improv you have to to be good at it so you like you 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 rehearse the language and you rehearse the concepts but. Um, That's right. How did you know how long it was going to be? Are you like at this time period, you're going to have to hit this beat so that we can get to this later? Or the fact that like Garrett's coming in with with Henry Winkler pieces all over his face, that just adds another 30 minutes of of ex extrapolation <laughs> or exposition. That's that's super cool. I'm glad that it seems this organic because it is but the structure of the thing is as well defined as it could possibly be so it's it's formatted exactly like your any old murder mystery party um every actor before they come to set gets a character description and that's it just a description of what their character is going to be the relationships they need to know about and then they you know get fitted for their costume and all that and then when they get to set on camera for the first time they read their objectives that when they open their envelope at the beginning of the case, that's the first time any of them know what they're going to be doing wow, here today. Wow, cool. The murderer doesn't know they're the murderer yet. Um, the person who dies already knows they're going to die. Um, but you're just walking between the rooms and completing these objectives, like talk to this person about the money, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Outside of that, you can do literally anything you want as long as it doesn't undermine any of those objectives. It's pretty rare that that would ever fuck something up. I don't think it ever did, um, like like screwing with that. But no, everybody, it it. it works the the engine of the mystery runs itself for everybody to just improvise around and then in terms of the timing we discovered through it the run uh, a light there's like a light that we have on for each uh like section of the murder mystery to run for a certain amount of time so it tells us when we all need to gather in the main room for the next part and then uh after the murder everybody gets their second set of objectives that's when the murderer finds out they're the murderer and everybody knows what they're doing for the rest of the evening but nobody knows who the murderer is going to be not a single person except for me knows who the murderer is going to be oh wow oh, so, so yeah so they all start and they go through part of it and they still don't know who the murderer is right that's right even the no, murderer. not even yep. not even the murderer yeah and i'll give you a i'll give you a, a hot steaming off the press is exclusive for this here show um to say what andrew was saying about that little light that tells you where to go um i would love viewers to enjoy knowing that for our first case murder at vanguard mansion we had not yet locked down the light thing to be like the time is up 
everybody get to the main room. So there is like a false getting everybody to the main room led by both Andrew and myself. And then and I'm like, everybody, you have a little more time. Like, and we all yeah, like, it's leave so and desert. stupid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I don't think. <laughs> yeah, it's I great. It's great. Do, I don't think you'd really notice it. But like now that I've said it, uh, this will be after if you have a ticket, go back and watch it again. And you will see me and Andrew being like, ah, we'll pick this up later. Let's it's time for the talent show. And then we realize <laughs> it's absolutely not time for the talent show because I think Tyler, our director, was off camera going. <laughs> you have 10 more minutes yeah 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 like <laughs> wow wow i uh i love i love all of this going on behind the scenes because the behind the scenes of how all of this stuff works always fascinates me and i thought that this was um because what we're now in april 2023 you said you filmed it in 2021 right yep yeah august so, of 2021 that's insane so we were still in the midst of like covid quarantine testing every day and all of this stuff and uh i guess it also is nuts so to me that you filmed it got it all done and then you're like well how do we put the tech into it that's yep that's nuts and i i do agree that there are many things myself included that i would not have done and other people would not have done had they known how complicated it was going to be in the <laughs> long run because you're like oh that's gonna be too hard i'm not gonna do it but once you're halfway through, you're like, well, I got to finish it. So you're, you're 2021, you're filming this and you're hiring your friends. And then when you're done with all this footage, you're like, now what? And you said like the, the, pro, the, at one point, Alex, you were like, if it doesn't happen tomorrow, like it's going to hit the shit or we got to close it down. Yeah. But ton are of you, yeah. So are you at that point, end of 2021, when you're done with it, are you expecting to have it out 2022 or are you expecting yeah. this time frame? Yeah, I mean, we really didn't know. Like, there were a ton of times where we were like, okay, it's going to be in the next, like, two months. And then the more and more we understood how, what an undertaking we were going to be, it was like, oh, no, it's not going to be in the next two months. It's going to be in the next year. And then it was like, oh, maybe it's not going to be in the next year. You know, like, we we really didn't know. We we kind of not gave up, gave up, but emotionally we were kind of like, I don't, th I don't, I I'm feeling as though, I'm releasing the expectation that the world is ever going to get to play this thing. Um, and yet here we are, which is what makes this so wonderful. And also I think so sort of calm or like, it's just a miracle that that people get to play. Yeah. And also too, like on top of, on top of the very real, you know, truth of the matter of it being an unbelievably difficult thing to technologically create, there's a lot of real world stuff going on, right? Like, you know, Broadway was not open yet. Mm -mm. When we start like, like Broadway shows had not even started performing yet after we had filmed this so there's the very real thing of like you know hunter and his team primarily do theater and we were like yeah of course they have to <laughs> bring be part of bringing broadway back to life this project is going to sit for a second and then like you know no joke this is we, there's like the real world implications of having like a real world uh, military conflict involving the people who were helping us make this thing so we all needed to like batten down the hatches, wait for the right moment, wait for the right time, make sure everybody was feeling ready to create, right? And feel ready to, because it's like at the end of the day, that's the most important thing, especially with this project. We need people who are like ready to do it and have fun with it. And so, you know, it's almost great that we, it, that, it, that it took so much time, do you know? Like, mm -hmm. because now here we are and also the timing of things, like Andrew and I got hilariously busy in even just the last handful of months after what was a, a long time of silence, which is the truth for a lot of, you know, performers, right? Um, so to like be, you know, taking meetings for this while like, you know, Andrew is saying like, no, Jen, you can't come in my trailer to hang out now. I got to do a foul play meeting. And like, you know, <laughs> I'm like hanging from like stunt cables in Atlanta for Mickey Mouse. Like this is seriously how we were making this thing. And I think that I actually don't know what we're going to do with our brains when <laughs> when 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 you people are watching this because it it's been a threat for like it's been hanging over our heads foul play for years and we're just so excited for people to see it and like yeah there will i wonder if there will be like a post-show depression after like every every case is out and we're like staring into the void of being like who can we kill next like, well that's what that was my next question of like 
Are you going to get it like start thinking about the next set of cases a season 2 this actually like partnering up with something like a Netflix where they're doing the interactivity and you can put this online you're shaking your head Andrew I want I want to Oh hear Alan. Yeah. <laughs> oh Alan. Let me hear yes, it. Yes, of course. I mean, yeah, this has always been... I mean, the, the first goal is for as many people to, to play and enjoy this thing as possible. And that's the only thing that can really lead to us being able to do any more of it. So please, you know, if you like it, you know, tell your friends and stuff. And then we can make more on our own or, you know, uh, uh, bring it to a, a larger streamer. But it, it's really going to just going to be right now riding the wave of, of letting this come out, letting us play it. And then we say, uh, who, who do we murder next, I think. Yeah, we have a lot to we we have a lot to learn, I think. Like, and we're excited to learn it. We're excited to see how people interact with it because, at the end of the day, like when you make something like this, you got to put it in people's hands. They have to. And I've personally been delighted, like what you said. I've been delighted by the responses of people. One of mine and Andrew's favorite things to do is to like corner somebody. It's like, hey, come here, sit down at this computer and look and look at this thing. And we like, it's very exciting to see to see it work you know what i would love to see is uh you, you can you can use this as long as you cast me in your next season or next couple of cases um it <laughs> is uh build a set with four walls and you know with some two-way mirrors so you can have cameras in for your wide shots sort of like love is blind pod style um you can have some top down so you can look at all the rooms but have um body cams on everybody so we can switch between first person pov you know what's funny is that this was the like original original idea. Like this yes. was like the like the first version of this idea was exactly this. My vision for this that I always had growing up was like one day, one of these days when they call my number, I'm gonna do a Broadway <laughs> live stream murder mystery where you can follow everybody and Rob McClure is gonna be there. Like that was the whole <laughs> idea. It's always gotta be Rob. That was the only prerequisite, and wait till you see him in in this thing, Alan. Like he he delivers some uh, Emmy worthy performances. Rob Rob is doing work that <laughs> He's doing, Rob is doing, doing work, work that work. I, that I would say is being pushed into. You know we're we're joking around here, right? Like, it's like <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He's so good. <laughs> like yeah, yeah, yeah. He like he commits to the bits. He, he risks food poisoning. He he didn't get it, which I was delighted to learn. Um, but yeah, <laughs> yeah, Rob is, Rob does not, did not have to do any of this. <laughs> I would go up to Rob on set cause Rob would be like looking off into the distance, like really intensely. And I'd go up to him. I'd be like, Hey man, you, you good? Everything good? And he'd be like, yeah, all good. Just, you know, getting into character. And I'm like, shut up. Like, no way. That's and when you like, he's you know, one of a kind. his character is, you know, an orc. Like it's like <laughs> yeah. so funny. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I can't wait to watch the ones with him and uh, and and Alex Brightman too, because like you have these yeah. professional. You, you mentioned professional improvisers earlier, and it's these these people who take comedy so seriously. Because you have to That's right. to be a great comedian, you have to take it seriously because it's all it's all about the it, there's science and timing and everything behind it. So That's right. I can't, yeah, yeah. I can't Brightman's wait. great. Brightman Stellar yeah. in his case, you're gonna love him. In in in, in the star turn of Jimmy Pop. <laughs> all right um let's see so before we get to the closing questions at the end to wrap up i just want to give a quick plug go to foulplay.live foulplay.live not dot com dot live i like that that's right all right so too, three too questions fancy for dot com yeah, that's right too, and also too no no www either did that's you know so this Andrew? old school i know no, i didn't know school. it like doesn't it, work i think maybe not <laughs> <laughs> So just, That's you know, funny. get right to it. You know, we're about efficiency here. Save the four characters. No www dot. It's just foulplay.live. Right. Okay. Um, all right. So, Alex, uh, I'll start with you, Andrew. You probably maybe remember these, but it's been a couple of years now since we've last No, definitely not. The... Okay. So, Alex, uh, what motivates you? Question number one. <sighs> what motivates me? Fascinating. A lot of things, but I think it's... I think it's uh, uh, the cultivation of, okay, I'm about to get deeper than I mean to. It is to answer the question, what is it all for, right? And that is, and that is meaning like, why do you want the next job? Do you want it so that it's an ego hit? Do you want it so that whatever, and as I've gotten older and particularly over the pandemic, it has been in service of creating 
like the life that brings me happiness. And that is, you know, being able to spend time with my loved ones, my friends and family, being able to make things that genuinely delight me. Yeah, the word, yeah, it's that. I know that that's a weird answer, but I am motivated by the creation of the life that I like really want to be living and am happy to be living. Very existential. I appreciate it. It always ha it always happens with me. You can't ask an open ended question <laughs> it's like that. Very yeah, true. Yeah. It's very very true. <laughs> All right, ABF. What motivates you? Yeah, I think I thanks Alex for talking so long so I could think of an answer. I think that it's um it's like and, and this is a big tie into foul play too. I, a lot of times something will happen when I, somebody that I love very much, uh, uh, I'll see them do the thing that they love. And I'm like, I, it makes me want to do something about that. Uh, you know, like when, when somebody I love is expressing their talent or expressing their passion. Um, I, I don't know why I have this impulse where I'm like, I gotta, I gotta do something about this. And I think so much of foul play is wanting to put these incredible friends of ours, uh, on display because I know what they can do and I want you to also know what they can do. And so that was huge in writing the characters uh, and knowing who we were writing them for um, of, of wanting to put these people on display and, and support them. Oh, that's awesome. Okay. So Andrew, you go first this time. What advice would you give to your younger self and younger people listening now starting out down a similar path of wanting to do online murder mysteries? No, just in general. Yeah. I, <laughs> I mean, I think, I, I think there's two things. I think it's like, keep planting these seeds, you know, like it's everything that, that is coming up now in regard to foul play, but everything in my life is something that I've been doing since I was 10, you know, like all these things that I was working toward just because I loved them. You don't have to wait to share your art or your passion with the world, because if we hadn't shared Broadway Who Done It, we would never have made foul play. And if I hadn't done those murder mysteries at my house, we would have never made Broadway Who Done It. So like you don't have to wait for something to be quote unquote perfect or right to share it. And also you can fucking cool out a little bit and relax like 5% more little Andrew and uh, big Andrew <laughs> as well. All right, Alex. Yeah, it's actually not too far off from that. It's like... Yeah, telling Andrew to cool out. I get it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yes. yeah. Everybody, everybody, <laughs> everybody should do it. Um, no, it's like, it's like being who you are. It's, it's truly the most like the thing that's repeated the most in like acting classes or like master classes. And like, you know, I teach young theater performers all the time. And the thing that I always try to instill is like, look, like, you, you literally cannot be Audra McDonald. Stop trying to do it, right? Because that's like a thing that we do as young people is we, we take inspiration, but then we try to become rather than be our own, be inspired by. And so to that, I say, you know, I think, I, I think that, you know, opportunities have presented themselves. Uh, let's, let's use Andrew as a great example, right? To Andrew, not, in spite of who he is, but because of who he is. And that everything, every one of Andrew's interests leads to the work that he has been able to get, right? Um, you know, and that's being a Disney Parks weirdo, right? Like, if if Andrew, I mean I, gen I mean, I genuinely mean it. Like, if you had censored that part of yourself, would you ever have had the imagination to create these things, right? Like, I think about, like, you know, I, I think about the That's fact right. that I was crying my eyes out at the Mario movie the other day for no reason other than I was like, it's Mario. Like, you know, that is that is what it is. These things that light something up in you, especially when you're younger, dude, just like go with them and see what that does. Because I genuinely believe that like my love for video games is also part of why foul play exists. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. it's kind of a video game. Yeah. It's, it's all of these things. You limit yourself by trying to be anything other than overwhelmingly who you are. I, I noticed that uh, the, the platform we're recording on tells me what OS you've got and what browser you're using. I notice you're, you're one of the few people who joins from Windows, which probably means you're a big gamer, I would assume. If, <laughs> if you saw, in fact, we have noticed that my foul play... Uh, sort of feedback on the tech isn't always the most useful because we have sort of found like if like as we were squashing bugs and working with the developers like a lot of times my computer would just brute force itself past any issues so everyone's <laughs> like hey i'm lagging a little bit and i'm like not me as i have like a cigarette and three monitors up and i'm like i'm cracking the case <laughs> <laughs> all right so uh okay last question then um alex back to you if you can only see one show for the rest of your life but you can see it as many 
times as you want, what would you see? Come on. Um, I can't answer this. Um, I know your answer. I feel like I know your answer. Is it a musical? But you, like, is that what we y- mean? Yeah, yeah. I think we're talking musicals. It's the theater podcast with Alan Seals. That's right. That's right. Yeah, the theater uh, you, podcast. What is, what is it, Andrew? What do you think I, I would think say? It, I think it's Jesus Christ Superstar. Oh, dude. Okay. Okay. <laughs> See, I was getting way more genuinely. You want to know where I was going is I was going way more like, oh, wow. I would love to watch like, I would love to like watch like once on like Michael Arden's once on this island a million times because I know how meticulous Michael is with detail and like no stone is unturned and like he finds, you know what I mean? Like it, it, there's so much to find in his work always. So I was like, maybe going there, but 100% it's Jesus Christ Superstar. Can the cast change a lot? Because like, yeah, that that's, a, that's so, going to be in mine. That's going to be in the mine. The cast has I, to be able to change. I need to see everyone alive play those roles. <laughs> okay, fair. We'll give you, and we'll like, give you that. And just try to make them work. You that's, know what I mean? Like, that's the it's, only show in all the theaters on Broadway, and it's all different cast every night. There you go. Absolutely. Yeah, <laughs> that sounds great. <laughs> <laughs> and, and Tim Rice is thanking you very, very much. Did, wait, he wrote that, right? Or was that? It's Weber and yeah, Weber. Weber and, Fuck. We, well, 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 Rice no, the both the of them. Both oh, right, right, right. Oh, okay, so I'm not totally off base. All right, so ABF, you, what would you say? I think it's the same. The cast got to change, but it's the last five years. I think it's the last five years. Different cast every night. I love that. I did a production of that in high school where we changed it every night and like everybody got to play both roles. That's my kind of vibe. I would also love to see an Assassin's where everybody switches every night, but I'm going to go the last five years, I think. Oh, I love that. Good it's so answer. funny that you picked like good Sad, shows. I know. Otherwise, no, I think what I, I said like... last time... <laughs> Well, I think what I said last time on this podcast actually is Little Shop, which I would stand by. Um, but I'm gonna, well, I'm that, gonna that, that for production today. Exists. That production I know I can just keep seeing it a hundred times. I know, and I've seen it like four <laughs> times, <laughs> and we have plans to see it again. <laughs> I know. Did you see it with Rob McClure? Twice, of course. <laughs> fair, fair, very good. All right. So, in addition to foulplay dot live, no dubs, no dot com. Where can we find you guys online? Alex? Yeah, I'm at Alex Boniello on any any of the platforms, uh, which is Twitter for as long as that feels like it should exist, um, and Instagram, and yeah. I'm Andrew B. Feldman underscore on Instagram and TikTok, and so I Twitter no underscore, and hey, we're also Foul Play Mystery on, uh, on all your social yep. medias as well, so follow that up. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We got to follow the show on the socials, too. Yeah, so you can get more amazing episodes like this one at thetheaterpodcast.com. I'm on Instagram and Twitter and Facebook and TikTok. And leave a rating and a review wherever you're listening. And thank you to Jukebox the Ghost for the intro and outro music. And Alex and Andrew, if we had a podcast, our names all start with A, so we'd be the double A, triple A battery, right? Triple yeah, triple A, a, triple a, a, a battery does sound triple A battery does yeah. sound like a crime, uh, but I, I would I prefer not to triple A assault and battery the podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thank you, yeah, guys. Great. It's been a pleasure. Thanks, Alan. Thanks for having Thank us. You. We won't kill you today. Oh, next season though. You never know. Take a deep breath. Make the world a little colorful.